here we are at Frustration Reef, a spot I've fished many times. I tried to launch my kayak this morning, well I didn't even get that far, I went down to Red Bluff. Um, as you can see the swell's fairly pumping, much bigger than yesterday and I don't think it was forecast this big, this looks like two, two and a half metres, it was meant to be about maybe one and a half, so yeah it just wasn't worth, um, probably ended up getting, would have ended up getting smashed on the beach down there at Red Bluff. Um, the river mouth looked doable but there was heaps and heaps of boats going out and on a kayak the last thing you want is to be going through that narrow passage and have a big boat go past you, you're probably going to end up upside down and um, that's not the spot for it. So I went back to camp, um, changed tactics, rigged up my beach gear, um, threw it in the kayak, paddled across the river and uh, a 10 minute walk over here to Frustration Reef. Now you can probably see the water's like really chocolate or coffee brown out there, the river's running really hard at the moment. Um, had a big downpour a week and a half ago. There's a pretty big swell. Normally I wouldn't really fish here on this sort of swell, so it's going to be hard if I do actually catch anything decent getting it in. But anyway, we'll see how we go. Um, you've got to be out to win it. I've caught a lot of good fish at this spot over the years. Um, so what I'm using today, I've had this rod for a long time. It's a 13 foot Saltiga Ballistic. Uh, awesome rod, probably a 50 pound rod, lots of power. Um, Lots of good casting range too. Um, this is an old faithful rig of mine I really like, so that's probably about an 8.0 circle hook and maybe a 5.0 octopus hook on the bottom. Um, a long leader, <laughs> probably looks like 130 pound to me, which is good when you're fishing around these gnarly sort of oyster encrusted ledges. Down to a swivel and I've got like a running, a running sinker type set up there. Um, this rig's really uh, caught quite a few good fish off the beach. Um, for whatever reason, it seems to work and it. It casts really well too, which is important here because there's a fair bit of rock in the water, you need to get out past it. So anyway, I'm just waiting for some bait to defrost there. I've got some um, bits and pieces. It's some fish I caught in a comp a couple of weeks ago. It's like a tailor in there, a couple of hezzers. Got some more hezzers still cryovacked and cold. Um, yeah, just love to chuck a fillet of that on and uh, send it out and see what happens. Alright, first cast, I haven't cast a beach rod for a while, so here we go. So what you need to do here is walk down a bit in between sets, just to give yourself a little bit more length. <coughs> I'll show you the footwear I'm wearing in a minute, but you need to wear rock boots for this. Um, it's the only way. Alright. Okay, not too bad, out there, and you really want to be fishing up a little bit higher, there's some big sets coming through at times, swells are a little bit big to be fishing here, but I'm going to be very conservative. Um, these boots, spikes on the bottom, as you can see, um, this rock isn't too slippery, but if you fall over, you can see all those little barnacles there. You're going to get cut up pretty bad and you definitely don't want to end up in the water here. Um, you can swim around, there's a little bit of a beach there, but uh, you're going to get pounded and cut up. If you're not a strong swimmer, you could be in all sorts of trouble. Oh, bit of a set coming through here. Looks like there's plenty of weed out there too. Be really careful with some of these. If you're not watching, <coughs> they will could quite easily knock you over because I've got to rescue my bucket there. It's not going to stay there for long. So I've just got half a herring on here. As you can see, that a big circle hook's going to stick proud. And then I've just got this sort of stinger hook 5 0 down the end here. Um, ideally, if a bigger fish picks this up, we get a nice jaw hook up there. I just shortened my trace a bit, that one I'd, I'd made was just a bit too long. Um, but yeah, it's all good. I forgot to mention before, this reel, it's a Saltiga Surf reel. It's alright, I've, I mean, I've had this set up for a long time. I don't do a lot of beach fishing these days. Um, and when I bought this, this was premium gear. It's got a long cast spool. Um, 
how much more distance it gives you, but it does, it does make a little bit of a difference. Uh, I'm running pretty heavy braid, that's 50 pound braid on there. Um, this spot here, look, anything can turn up. I've caught a lot of pig snapper here, I've caught some mulloway. Sharks, you need a bit of power, um, especially when you're dragging things over these rocks. 30 to 50 pounds okay, but I've, I've opted for a 50 pound setup here. Hey guys, I'm going to wrap it up here for this morning. Um, not much happened, and I don't know, this water's really dirty here. I was fishing big baits. Um, really, only a mulloway or a snapper's probably going to, or a shark's going to take the bait I was putting out there. Um, not sure if there'd be any tailor, given how dirty the water is, but got a few little bites, but nothing serious going on here. Um, the swell's just cranking, it's just getting bigger and bigger while I'm here. I stuff up here, nearly got washed away a couple of times, I had to run up and sort it out. Um, so I'll just keep an eye on the conditions over the next coming days, hopefully get the kayak out if I can, but I'll have to see. Um, anyway, it's a great morning to be over here, it's such a beautiful spot. We'll um, hopefully have another crack over here, maybe at night time, um, over the rest of my stay here in Kilbarry. Cheers. What have we got here? Okay, so there's a bit of swell this morning. Have a look at this one. I'm gonna have to be pretty careful out there. Just step right back when these big ones are coming through. The tide's coming in. Um, there goes Reef Walker. The tide's coming in, so hopefully this brown stuff, fresh water, is just sitting on top of the salt. Underneath might be a few fish. Um, speaking of reef walker, I went out, uh, was it Tuesday I think, and um, had a cracking day. I took my six year old son out. <coughs> um, we went out really early. We bagged out on pinkies for the boat pretty much as the sun came up. Um, then we went and, and caught a lot of mackerel and, and decent sized yellowfin tuna. Um, that was pretty frenetic action. They lost a lot of fish at the gaff because their uh, the gaff was pretty average. Um, it's just really blunt and probably not fit for purpose. But anyway, um, well, we got a nice tuna out of it for my family, so that was great. Um, then we came in and just up here, um, Aiden's got all these pots there, so we pulled the pots and everyone got a few craze each. So yeah, really. Really great day in the water. It was really cool to take my son. He'd never really um, fished deep water like that before, just because I hadn't really taken him out on my boat. But um, yeah, I think he really enjoyed it. He saw a massive shark, pretty got pretty close to it, sea snakes, things like that. So um, and a lot of action with the with the pelagic fishing. We we're getting sort of triple hookups and stuff like that. So it was really good fun. All right, I'm going to get down here and. Make sure. I'm just waiting for my bait to defrost a bit and I'm just having a bit of a look watching these waves. A few big sets have come through since I've been here. Um, I just want to be careful, you know, make sure I'm <laughs> one more gear so I'm going to get wet and uh, um, I don't walk out too far. Pretty familiar with this spot. Um, you know, fairly safe. But you get bold over here, you're going to get cut up. That's the, that's the sacrifice, you know getting too close. Um, I haven't got wetsuits on, I've just got my boots again and the shorts so I don't really want to be falling over. Um, one thing you know around here, um, if you come over and the swell's big, just over there. You can just fish off, off that beach bit there and it's pretty safe, you've got to get over those breakers there. Um, so if you ever come here and you're not sure, it's a good option. Just wait for a wave to come um, and I'll just show you something here. This bit here is kind of where you might want to bring your fish in if you can. You, you don't really want to be lifting them over that front ledge. You have to get too close and it's, it's pretty gnarly there. You can kind of wash them up down here, but you're really at the mercy of the ocean. <laughs> um, the set's coming through where you're trying to land your fish. Good luck. This little raised platform here acts as a little bit of a buffer. So if I cast out and then stand over here, the front of that ledge takes the brunt of the swell, only a bit of white water is spilling over. Down here, it's kind of more tapered and it, it really shoots up. Um, so that's 
I'll, I'll try and get some footage of this and show you, but um, just something to be mindful when you are scoping out a spot. You know, you might cast in one location, so I wouldn't mind if I can casting as close to the edge as possible, and then retreating back up onto this sort of higher level, and if I catch a fish, I might try and walk down this way a bit, but if, if a set's coming, you're better off on that side than this side, because it's a little bit lower and it's tapered, so the swell can rush straight up, you get a lot more white water coming through, and um, you know, any, anything coming through about waist high, there's a good chance of bowling you over, and there, there could be a bit of that this morning. With the incoming tide, the swell sort of builds. You can see down there, blue holes absolutely going off this morning. I'm, I'm sure the guys surfing are having a ball. Um, and it's only going to get bigger and bigger as the day goes on. Anyway, hopefully my bait's defrosted and we'll um, have a crack. Alright, here's one here. This is what I'm talking about. If you watch, the smallest part of this wave will be just there. It just come over and it's quite low. Up here, a lot more of a washing machine. I'm uh, really having trouble bait staying on the hooks out here in this turbulence so I've just rigged up a little butterfly herring basically just fill it each side rip the backbone out like that cut the fin off and just trim a little bit off the bottom just to um, just to streamline it a little bit um, there's a bit of water moving out there you don't want your bait spinning if you can help it and it's pretty hard to tell if it is spinning or not but one thing that will give it away is excessive line twist so I'm just going to put that hook through that fleshy part there and that'll give that a little bit more movement under there and it's a much more sturdy bait. I'm having to bomb it a long way some of these fillets because they've been frozen they're just a bit, just a bit soft and uh, they're flying off which is really annoying. Um, keep having to come back up and um, get some bait. Usually when I was fishing, say, land-based competitions, I'd have a little bucket attaches to my my weight, uh, weight, my waist belt and gimbal. Um, I didn't bring it. Um, would have been pretty handy because you don't have to keep walking back up off the rock. But you know, it's okay. I'll we'll survive. Get a little bit of burly going in this uh, outlet to see here because. Um, I haven't had a lot of bites really, a bit like the other day, pretty quiet, but I'll persist. And uh, it's a nice morning over here. Hopefully get a hook up soon. Well, have a look at this for a pike. Gonna slab a bit of this up. Nice oily bait to use out there. Birds don't harass me. See how soft it ends up. Might just um Back to back like that. Feels pretty soft. I don't think it's going to stay on too long, but that's okay. We'll get a nice bit of a scent out there. Just got plenty of bait. Just keep turning them over. The skin is tough, which is good. Stay on the hook. <laughs> 